Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna show you the key differences between the two-way system and the three-way. In the last video on the two-way versus three-way, you guys showed some interest, so we're gonna go a little bit more in depth on some of the differences in the components and how they work, and then show on the dyno what they're actually doing and try and relate that a little bit to the car. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the two-way system. Uh, first, I wanna show you how just like what's inside the canister in general. Sometimes people are confused and think that this whole thing is full of nitrogen. This is essentially the reservoir. Within this is a separator piston, which goes about like that. And you know, as the rod goes in and out of the shock, it moves down slightly to compensate for the displacement of the shock rod volume. Below this separator piston is where the nitrogen is. Everything above it, through the whole hose and into the shock is full of oil. And then this guy is where the valve sits. Um, so this is a two-way. Within this is the housing, essentially the canister head housing. Inside that sometimes either the housing is the seat or there's an actual piston inside there. Within the piston, uh, there's a couple of sets of holes that, that uh, check flow one way or another. So essentially after it comes in through the hose and down through this area in here to meet the top of the piston, there's a check valve that allows flow to go only one direction. And so it can go through the center. It enters this little area. It's like a little piston and it's preloaded against these Belleville washers. They're little cone washers, They're like springs. So essentially when the pressure builds up inside the shock from the shaft displacing volume, eventually it will open this valve. And as you adjust the knob, you know, softer or stiffer, it will load the valve against the seat. So it takes a higher and higher pressure and so it exerts a higher force from the shock. So after you've completed the compression stroke, the flow will come back through these larger orify and through the check valve. So that's essentially how it works. It only controls the pressure and force at which the valve will open. So it will reach that pressure very quickly with small amounts of motion. Okay, so moving on to the three-way, it's essentially the same setup. There's a lot of similarities. It has a canister, it has a, a banjo that all the fluid flows in through, uh, except it's got two knobs on the top instead of just one. So the larger knob, what people often call the high-speed knob, it does the exact same function as the knob on the two-way. It loads a poppet valve. Essentially what that does is as you spin this shaft, just like in the two-way, it loads this poppet valve tighter and tighter against the seat so it takes more pressure and so forth to blow off the valve. And it's got its own check valves and stuff in there. The addition to it is that there is a needle and seat within that shaft. So there's a tiny orifice that you spin with the small knob on the top the low speed knob that backs in and out a needle from a seat. What you get is a bypass to that, the amount of pressure that would normally be built up. So it allows you to control the rate at which the pressure is built up because a small gap is formed essentially when this needle unseats and that allows you to blow the rate at which the force is developed, which can be really useful for tuning balance and, and a lot of other things. And I'm gonna move on to the dyno and show you kind of how that works. So now we're at the dyno and I'm gonna show you a little bit how it functions. Maybe we can touch at the end on how it relates to the vehicle, but that might be its own video in and of itself. But if you don't understand what the component's doing, you're gonna be kind of lost as to what it's gonna do to the car. So. Uh, just bear with me. So essentially what this valve operates off of is the fluid displaced as the rod goes in and out. So as the rod goes in, it puts uh, pressure against these valves in here. And then as it extends, there's a, there's a check valve that allows it to freely flow the other direction. So essentially the rod is acting as the piston. Essentially what we have here is the, uh, there's a high speed knob on the bottom. Uh, which is the same knob on a, uh, a two-way, a common two-way. A lot of two-ways operate this way, not all of them. So I'm just going to be speaking about, you know, how, you know, Jerseys, Motons, Penske 8760s have a three-way setup that's similar. But the two-ways, a lot of them are still just the high-speed valve that controls a blow-off and a pop-it. The low speed on top is just a bypass that directs fluid around the poppet valve. So I'm gonna show you what that does and uh, we're not gonna do anything crazy, just go to like five inches a second or something like that. Just clear this out. 
So the high speed is set five or six clicks from soft. So it's got a little bit of load on it and the low speed is full soft. So to show you what the low speed does, I'm gonna start turning it up and show you how this controls the rate at which the force is reached up to the point of the blow off valve opening. So it acts, it acts like a digressive piston essentially where you, the high speed controls how much preload you have, how, how much force can be reached and the low speed controls the rate that it gets there. So as you turn up the low speed, you can see the rate, the slope of the curve rising, which is the damping rate, which is really what you're concerned about. So we can keep going and going. So essentially, as that increases, you're increasing the rate at which the force is generated up to a point. Now, once we get to that point, I'll just go ahead and close it. This is essentially what a two-way is. It just controls, there's just a simple offset here. So it allows you to build force up to a point and then it blows off. Whereas, you know, with a, with a two-way, it happens immediately. So you're always hitting that wall, essentially. As the force comes up, it doesn't spike immediately, even though it holds on to it. That's just hysteresis in this particular shock. It's just what was laying around the shop to show a demonstration. Um, but they're all gonna have it. Two ways, it's unavoidable. Uh, everything flexes, it's, it's never gonna be that perfect, especially when you're trying to increase pressure immediately. So that's the difference. This is the high speed, and then low speed backs off the rate. So essentially, uh, you can't use the full extent of the valve. It becomes too stiff too quickly. And you can start you know, having issues over bumps, it becomes rough. The low speed allows you to control the rate at which that happens so that it's not quite as rough, but you can still have good turn in and, and vehicle control, things like that. So this is just a basic example of some differences between the two-way and three-way. There are very similar. Obviously the three-way is essentially a two-way plus an extra uh, mode of control. Hopefully that answers some of your questions as far as more detail. So if you have any more questions or anything like that, just reach out to us if it wasn't in the video or if you have anything particular to your car and we'll try and get you taken care of. We'll see you in the next video.